Our province's long-standing issue with Quebec is about one province's actions purposely working to deal to deny economic progression of the whole of Eastern Canada, and that most definitely includes Ontario. This country needs to stand up and take notice of what's going on. The further irony, of course, is that while reaping billions from our upper Churchill, Quebec also receives approximately $17 billion annually in major federal transfers. In 2010 and 2011, Quebec alone will receive almost 60% of the equalization pot for all provinces. And what's Quebec doing with all this revenue? Well, they're giving tax breaks to the residents, they're reducing electricity rates, they're funding the best childcare programs in the country, and the lowest tuition for post-secondary students for only Quebec residents. And Canadians are paying for Quebec satellite offices or mini embassies in approximately 26 countries, including the cities of Barcelona, Munich, Mumbai, Vienna, Santiago, and Damascus, to name just a few. A recent study by the Montreal Economic Institute indicates that Hydro-Quebec provides a $7 billion annual subsidy to Quebec electricity consumers, resulting in a rate that is less than 40% of Moncton or Halifax or Toronto or Calgary. This is a policy, of course, which provides less income to the government of Quebec, resulting in a greater need for contributions from all of you from the rest of Canada. In 2008, Quebec made $2.3 billion from the Upper Churchill Project, while our province made $50 million. Power which is bought from us by Hydro-Quebec is flipped by them and sold, on average, for 36 times more than what they paid for it. The original contract was 44 years old, was 44 years, with a 25-year renewal at a lower rate for the last 25 years. It's the equivalent of selling 48 million barrels of oil at $1.60 a barrel. And we know what oil is worth today. Well, it sounds unbelievable, yet that is the reality that our province has been facing for the past 40 years. And despite numerous entreaties to renegotiate a fairer deal, Hydro-Quebec will have no part of it. The gross inequity of this agreement cannot be denied. It is without a doubt considered the biggest loss of resources by our province. And in fact, I would venture to say that there are no other such agreements of a dispropor disproportionate magnitude in our entire country. The shock for me as a provincial leader is the sense of greed and arrogance and entitlement displayed by Quebec after, quote, milking Newfoundland dry, in the words of one of our national newspapers. This attitude evolves from their assumed ownership of Labrador, which is evidenced by their continued use of inaccurate maps on their official government website. These maps unabashedly include Labrador in Quebec's territory, contrary to the 1927 decision of the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, and contrary to Newfoundland and Labrador's terms of union with Canada in 1949. Can anyone deny our outrage and desire to see an end to this imperialistic attitude and I can get away with anything approached by Quebec? Quebec gets its own way because it has achieved what I would term the political trifecta. Their provincial special interests are protected by their influential ministers in the federal government at the time, their provincial government, and the bloc, a party that has a significant role in the balance of power, which prioritizes issues only of concern to Quebec. The strength of their strategic triangle is premised on the perceived necessity of their support for national governance. 
This triangulation, in the words of Jeffrey Simpson, results in the strangulation of the individual interests of other provinces that don't fit the agenda of Quebec. This is not good for us, ladies and gentlemen, individually, provincially, or nationally. And it creates a serious inequity in our great country. The tail is really wagging the dog, and it must stop.